Hello everyone, welcome to the Automation Desk. My name is Eddie, and in today's video, I wanna show you three different ways you can self-host N8N, either on a cloud provider or on a local machine or a server that you might have. N8N is essentially like Zapier or make.com. It allows you to build flows, build integrations, AI agents, whatever you can think of uh, with a no-code, low-code uh, UI. So that's extremely powerful. And the best thing about N8N that's it set apart from things like make.com or Zapier is that it's open source, meaning you can go to the GitHub repository and you can just download the copy and host it yourself. What this means for you is that you're not limited by the amount of workflows or the amount of runs that you can do. You're limited by your hardware essentially, right? Self-hosting this yourself will give you unlimited workflow runs or projects. Obviously, N8N has a version that they host where you can just go to their website, sign up, and you can quickly start building flows. If your customer base is growing or you have a lot of flows, you're quickly going to start hitting those limits. And so that's when it makes more sense to self-host this yourself. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to show you three different ways you can self-host N8N. Uh, the first one, it's going to be my personal favorite, and it's going to be on DigitalOcean. Very straightforward. Uh, it will allow you to deploy it and then be able to access it through a custom domain of your choosing. The second way is going to be through Heroku. This one's very easy to do. The only thing is if you want to do add different configurations to it, like your own URL or change the database or stuff like that, it, it would take more steps. But at least it gives you a one-click installation where you can just run it on a Docker container within Heroku and you can get started. And then finally, I'll show you how to deploy it locally on your computer or a server if you have one. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the DigitalOcean. So if you haven't already, make sure you head over to DigitalOcean and create an account. It's going to ask you to put in your credit card information. So go ahead and do that as well. But once you've done that, you're going to head over to Droplets. This is essentially the containers that will host this N8N image for you. Uh, and you're going to click Create Droplet. As you can see, the price here is relatively low. You know, um, obviously it depends on how fast you want it to be, but in my opinion, I think it's relatively low for what you get. And so once you hit create droplet, you want to choose your region, uh, your data center. If you're in the America, I think choosing the default here is fine. And because you want to deploy N8N, you want to head over here to marketplace and you just want to look it up. All right. So N8N already has an image you can quickly just select. It'll take care of installing everything for you. So you select that, and then this is where you select the tier that you want. Um, we're gonna choose the cheapest tier, which is $6. And keep in mind, it's not $6 a month, it's based on usage. So if you use it, I don't know, like two weeks, then your bill might be lower or more if you go over the amount of hours allotted for that month. But the $6 plan is good enough for this. If you want faster speed, faster compute, you can obviously scale. And you wanna leave everything as is. The only thing I would recommend adding is this automated backup plan. So if there's ever a problem or an outage or anything, DigitalOcean will make sure to back up basically everything in your N8N instance, and it'll just spin it up again, and you'll be back and running. You won't lose any data, any flows, anything. For this example, I'm not gonna enable it just for time. Uh, and then here it's gonna ask you to create a password. So you can do that quickly. I'm just gonna copy a password I already have here. Arena. You can enable this, it's free. It's just analytics basically and monitoring. The host name I'm gonna leave default. You're gonna click create project. So this takes you know a little bit to set up. But the next thing you wanna do is you basically wanna connect your domain. Uh, what this will allow you to do is you'll be able to go to, for example, n8n.yourdomain.com and be able to access N8N. So let's go ahead and do that. I have a domain here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to copy this, head back to DigitalOcean, and you want to go to the networking tab. So you go to domains, you paste your domain. I'm just going to remove this. And it's very important that you add the subdomain N8N. Otherwise, this uh, might override you know, your current website or whatever you have on the main URL. Uh, select the project that you added that droplet to, add domain. Oh got to remove the trailing backslash. So once you add that, it'll essentially, you'll have to create a type A record you will add to your DNS provider. And that's going to create that link between your DigitalOcean N8N instance, and you'll be able to load it on your n8n.domain.com. So let's go ahead and do that. Here you want to put at, it just means I was going to use this URL, the current URL. And then you want to select the droplet where you deployed N8N. And then here I'm going to lower this 300 seconds because I, I want this to be fast just for the demo. Nice. So now we've added that. You want to copy this IP address 
and you want to head over to your DNS provider, your DNS settings. I'm using Squarespace domains here, but it should be a very similar flow for anything else you might be using. It's just going to ask me to log in. And then here for the host, I'm going to put my subdomain. That's going to be the host. The type is going to be A, and the address is going to be whatever IP address you have in DigitalOcean. Again, I'm going to change this to custom, and I'm going to put 300 seconds. Great. So now that you've added that, you want to head over back to the Droplets tab, click on your droplet for N8N, and then you want to click this console. So this is going to be, do not be intimidated. It's just a terminal. And all you want to do is just going to ask you for your domain and some extra information, but it's relatively straightforward. So subdomain, I'm going to leave it as default N8N. Your domain, uh, you want to use the domain that you added that record to. So I'm going to head over here. You just want to copy the text, copy that. And if for some reason there's an error between that link of you adding that record to your DNS, it'll let you know that there's no link and it won't let you keep go forward. So it seemed like it worked. So here I'm just gonna add my email. And then here you wanna set your time zone. There's a specific format you need to use. So I'll put a link to this uh, moment.js.com. It just lets you grab your current time zone or you can find it here, the proper name for it. And I'm gonna paste that here. And then it's going to start running through and installing everything. Uh, so we'll just let that run and I'll come back whenever it's done. Awesome. It looks like it just finished. Uh, and at the end, it's going to tell you where your NA server is hosted at. We're going to copy that URL, just go there. And as you can see now, it's hosted here on my Nova phone assistant domain with the subdomain N8N. And the great thing about this is that you can share this link with your coworkers internally or whoever you want, and they can create an account and start building flows. But also, because you deployed this on the cloud, uh, your webhooks and everything, it's going to be pretty much very similar to the hosted version that N8N provides. So we can test that really quick. You're going to create a, a webhook. Uh, and you can see it'll have the same domain as where you hosted your website. So we can quickly test this. We're gonna head over to Postman to send a test. And as you can see, there it goes, it received the data. Awesome, so that is the first way you can host this. The second way, which it's, it's simpler and less steps than the DigitalOcean version, is with Heroku. You wanna create an account with Heroku and then you can create a new app, but this adds more steps. There's this document that N8N provides. I'll leave a link to this in the description. And here there's a button that you can just quickly click deploy on Heroku. And this will do is like, it'll basically get that image, that N8N image ready for you to deploy on Heroku. And it's just a one click install. So we're just gonna put a name here. Cool, we're gonna leave everything default. We're gonna leave this as default. And then here you want to leave everything default. If you want, you can change your time zone. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to copy my time zone, put it there. Your encryption key, you definitely should change this. So make sure you change it to something else and save it. For your webhook, you want to copy the app name. So one thing that it wasn't straightforward for Heroku is that even though it tells you to put the app name here, what you'll actually need is like the full URL where Heroku hosts N8N. And you won't get that URL until after it's finished deploying everything. So we're gonna wait for it to finish, and then when it's done, I'll come back and show you one thing you need to update for this to work perfectly. Awesome, so that took a little bit, but it's done. And the really cool thing about Heroku is that it is truly a one-click install. You don't have to run extra steps. So once it's done, you can click View. It should open it on a new tab. And uh, it's still starting up, so we'll give it a few more seconds. But in the meantime, Heroku gives you, by default, a URL, so you don't have to configure your own. That's also a nice thing. And what that means is that, you know, your webhooks will be tied to that URL as well. But in order for it to be the correct URL, what you want to do is that you can see here at the top, it's not just the app name, it's this full URL. So you want to copy this whole thing, and you want to go back to the settings, and in your config bars, here in settings, you wanna update it here. So I'm just gonna click edit, and then I'm just gonna paste this here. So once you save that, uh, Heroku is automatically gonna restart. They're called dinos, but essentially the workers, it'll just restart it on its own. And as you can see, it loaded for the first time, but because I changed that config, uh, we're gonna give it a few seconds and it should reload with the updated URL. 
And again, that's important for your webhooks. Otherwise, your webhooks are going to be incorrect. Um, they're just going to be like your app name. And when you try to send a payload to that webhook, it's not going to work. So let's do that. So we're going to quickly create an account. Whoops. Uh, we're going to skip this, skip. And if you start from scratch, we're just going to test the webhook really quick, make sure the configuration worked. And as you can see, there's that full URL. And we're going to send a test really quick. Listen for request. I use Postman, so I'm just going to send the same request from here. It looks like it succeeded. We go back to our N8N instance on Heroku, and you can see that it's uh, we received the payload here. Great. So the last method I'm going to show you is going to be locally. So this is going to be great if you're just looking to test certain flows, try different things out. But for production, there are more steps you would have to take to make this production ready. And I will create another video covering all, like a full guide on how to do that. The nice thing about hosting this locally on your own hardware is that you're limited by your hardware, right? So if you have a really nice PC that you don't use or you're using it as a server, you can host it on there and you get basically a limited request is going to be much faster than the basic tier on Heroku and DigitalOcean. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you really quick how you can quickly install this and start playing with it. You're going to need Docker. So if you don't have Docker, go ahead to docker.com and you want to choose your version, install it. It should be straightforward. And then there's this documentation here on how to install it, but you don't really need to follow any of that. Once you've installed it, you want to head over to Docker desktop, open the app, and then you want to go to images and you can search for the image. So very similar to DigitalOcean, it's essentially almost the same image. So you want to just cop, uh, select, look up N8N. Uh, the correct one is N8N IO slash N8N. So you want to click run. And so as you will see, this is going to run extremely fast, uh, just simply because obviously your laptop is probably faster than whatever configuration we chose on DigitalOcean and Heroku. So we'll wait for this to finish running. And there you go. It just finished. It downloaded the image. And then I'm going to click run. One important step here is you do want to set this port because if you don't, when you try to access it on your local host, you won't be able to. So you can just go with the default port number here, 5678. You're going to click run. And as you can see, that was extremely fast. And now you should be able to access your N8 instance on local host on your machine. So we're going to click that link and there it is. So I'm going to, I'm just going to sign up real quick. I'm going to skip this and there it is. So now you can start playing with this locally. The only thing with this current install locally is that your webhooks will also be locally. So if you wanted to, for example, send a webhook from an app like Slack or a custom application that you might have, it won't work. You're going to have to configure a tunnel and you can do that with like Cloudflare, for example, which will essentially let you install Cloudflare on your machine where you're hosting N8N and it'll expose basically your N8N instance through Cloudflare and allow you to send requests that will hit your local install. So I'll cover that in the next video, but you can still play around with this. So I'm going to just do a quick test with the webhook. I'm going to head over to Postman, copy the webhook URL. And as you can see, there you have it and receive the data. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or just message me directly. And yeah, stay tuned, like and subscribe. And um, I'm going to try to get that next guide on how to get this working fully at a, as much as you can at a production level uh, locally if you want to deploy it on a server or anything. So thank you for watching and have a great day.